Stellaris Toxoids. Welcome, dear friends and deep thinkers. We're going to go for one of the new Toxoid empires. Talk a lot about Toxoids and play a very toxic game. You can see them already. We've tried out on the stream the Rototo Tavul High Serenity, and now we're going to go for the Gothican Alliance, a direct democracy. And that's a really interesting story. They look like Shogoths, and if you know the Shogoths from uh, Lovecraft, they are very adaptable. Like they can adapt, they can transform themselves into everything. And that's absolutely the idea behind them that are led by the hapless leap of faith. Um, they're a direct democracy and they have a lot of the toxic traits already. So they are scavengers. Um, that's a new trait that grants research and a portion of other resource costs of the destroyed fleet. So uh, you might get research and alloys from the debris because usually you have to choose now. And this gives you both. Ships can also be salvaged from some de uh, debris, so that's very cool in a war or if you're battling against some mining drones, you might get their ships, maybe. Then we have mutagenic spars. We can build the mutagenic spars. Each bath attendant grants pop growth speed 1% per industrial district, happiness decrease by 0.5% per industrial district, and habitability 0.5% decrease per industrial district. So we might have a... Um, an interesting planet where we breed, so to say. They are fanatic egalitarian and materialist, so we can give them a lot of living standards if we want to. And they have one of the first um, overtuned traits, we'll come to that later. Augmented intelligence decreases leader lifespan by 10 and increases physics, society and engineering research by 10%. Also, incubators grants between plus 30 and minus 10% pop growth speed, inversely proportional to the number of pops on the planet. So if a few pops, they grow a lot. If they, you have uh, many pops, they don't grow much. They're also unruly. Empire size from pops is increased by 10% and they have spliced adaptability. Leader lifespan minus 10 years, habitability plus 20%, which saves a lot of money, especially in settling early on. You have also 100% habitability on your two first two um, habitable worlds. So that's really good for you. They are overtuned. Allows a selection of overtuned traits here, but that's not all of it. It can be further boosted by the Damn the Consequences Edict, which we'll come to later. That has a lot of consequences, actually. And um, overtuned traits can be freely added and removed through gene tailoring and start with the ability to genetically modify your pops. So they're basically made for the genetic ascension. Let's see about their story. Their story is also really fun. So chaos once was once ubiquitous among the Gothicans. War, tyranny, and a more unstable than usual climate combined to forge a species, which is very adept at making the best of a bad situation. Until only a few decades ago, low-scale conflict between a plurality of Gothic states was an ever-present state of affairs. As their civilization rapidly but uncomfortably progressed into the age of high technology, an underworld developed where regular Gothicans would scavenge for a living, and even splice in dangerous homebrew gene cocktails in the search for a competitive advantage. Today it's called biohacking, and some people really do it on Earth. <laughs> it is from that underworld that change came. Although cutthroat, it was far more egalitarian than Gothic and high society. After all, everyone knew that fortune today could proceed, misfortune tomorrow. So when the idea of popular governance emerged, it rapidly took hold, spreading like wildfire. Before long, tyranny was overthrown and a Gothican alliance of local constituencies was established. That's where the name of us came from. Though many were skeptical in the early years, unity was forged through purpose. Suddenly, with Gothicans no longer struggling for survival, the very stars appeared attainable. Now, with the discovery of the Hyperlane network, a new chapter in their history may begin. And we'll begin that. As you can see, we have set that to... I, I always like spiral or ring galaxies. They're just fun to play with. This time we'll start with ring. We'll go for 15 AI empires. I don't really like the advanced AI starts, but we'll go Grand Admiral nonetheless. Maximum number of fallen empires and marauder empires to keep things interesting. Normal, tradition, habitable worlds, primitive civs. Crisis strength I like to set to max. Crisis type will new, use the new setting of all. Uh, we'll keep these at the normal dates. Grand Admiral scaling off so AI has already the full bonuses and strength from the start. Same with the modifiers here. 
AI aggressiveness is normal, empire placement random, advanced neighbors are off, there are none anyways, hyperland density, abandoned gateways, wormhole pairs are all normal, guaranteed habitable worlds are two, as is default, caravaneers, L gates, xeno compatibility is all on, and logist logistic growth, growth ceiling and growth required scaling are at the normal values. I leave Iron Man mode off, so I can, uh, in in case of technical difficulties, repeat some recordings or something like that. So, and I can also play offline, which is, which is a huge help in these times from time to time. <laughs> so, let's go. Let's play. Starting the new game. Loading map, graphics. Oh, that, that's a cool, that's a lightning cloud. The Gothican Alliance, ruler hapless. And we can see he's a space miner and explorer. That's pretty cool to start with. I mean, expansionist is also cool, but explorer opens up a possibility of a lot of exploration, which goes well with materialist. So there's that. Nature is a tepid in winter. Evolution is a glacial process. To prosper, we require strength, speed, and brain power. Now, not in a million years. Natural selection is miserly with its gifts, and so we must improve ourselves. Thus, our civilization is built on the principle of unrestrained enhancement of our physical bodies. These enhancements have allowed us to unite our world under one banner, and now they will lead us even further. With genetically crafted brains, brawn, and bravery, we shall prosper among the stars, as only a perfectly designed species can. Let's begin. I think it's a very, very cool start with these. And um, let's see. They also have really, really nice names. I mean, Star Sick Lover. And we have the new Mindful thing. I think that replaces Meticulous. I'm not sure about that. You can still get Meticulous. Oh, yeah. You can still get Meticulous. So it's a little bit worse than Meticulous. But um, mindful is is really good is really good as well. It has less archaeology excavation speed, but that doesn't matter at the start. So an increased discovery chance is is always good. Like five percent anomaly discovery chance doubles your chance to find an anomaly, basically, and that's really really good. So I like that. I like that to have that at the start, and we'll try to get the others as well. We can. We already see our two habitable worlds by some stroke of luck, and uh, wow, just wow! <laughs> that has so many consequences for us. We can instantly go where we want to go. We'll go to the to the bigger planet. That's the only info we have. Survey that system and make haste to settle there as quickly as we can. We we'll give our construction ship already something to do. We can go and claim that vizier's arms thankfully very cheap now through the space miner so we can build these stations extremely quickly we have good energy credit and mineral income some super superfluous food and consumer goods and okay alloy income as well as alloy uh, as well as okay influence so we're really in a good starting position here and uh, let's see what we can what we can research. Our researchers are also really nice, with one genius, spark of genius already among them. And oh, look at that. Oh, administrative AI gives research speed for all the sections. So we're going to take that. That's the best choice to start. No investment. And I think that is so important that we might put our genius on that. But let's see what we get here. So there's also some good choices here. Planetary unification starts with a <laughs> lump sum of unity. And that's also an extremely good choice at the start because you get also additional edicts. So uh, you could activate like the experience points edict for some uh, for some energy credits, which is also a good choice. Of course, society research from researchers is also really good. But I think we'll try to jumpstart this and go with a unity jumpstart. Then we have unruly yet confused. And uh, for this, yeah, we, I think we have enough minerals. That's still a very good pick. But we'll go for nanomechanics here. Because engineering is just something. It's, in my opinion, after the start of 
accelerating research speed, it's probably the most important uh, section of research. So what are the next steps to go for our empire? Ah, look at that, we have even unspent trade points eerily. So we're unruly, augmented intelligence and all. And we could theoretically go for one more trade point. We'll just try this out with some random trade, like enduring. We could make them live longer. They have 20 years less. And uh, if we create that template, uh, maybe let's call that a healthy Gothican. <laughs> we'll see how much the cost would be to apply that template to everyone. And the cost would be uh, 3,700. So that would, that would take a while. We're not going to do that right now. But um, when we have enough research, we we will definitely go for that quickly so not especially that trait but something else let's have a look at the edicts so we have a couple of edicts here encourage political thought is connected to egalitarian fortify the borders the standard and damn the consequences is connected to our origin pushes our genetic modifications to the very limit doubling their effect but also causing an increased amount of terrible side effects including sudden catastrophic combustion and the main thing, um, I would take this at once, but organic pop upkeep is increased by 100%. So we'll have to wait a bit to take that because it cannot be cancelled for 60 months. So we cannot turn it on and off and on and off, which would be uh, probably very good. Increasing, <laughs> increasing our output and everything. But the organic pop upkeep and the 60 months we will have to wait a little bit before we can implement this, but we should work to implement it because it's extremely good. I mean, um, if we add, for example, another one of these traits, like um, what could we add here? Something interesting, maybe mining, maybe. I mean, this is not bad. Juiced power, army damage, worker pop resource output it put or something like that or like expressed tradition 10% more unity from jobs I fail to understand though <laughs> yeah now that's that's funny right you get 10% more unity from jobs compared to traditional you can double this with the edict but this you cannot double with the edict this has minus 10 leader lifespan this has not so there's there's something to be had here um so you you could have like three of these and then double them with the edict that's something pretty powerful to go for once you have like enough consumer goods and food available so that could be a potential strategy hiding hiding there so uh, let's let's see what we find there oh. That's so good. It's <laughs> it's a gift. It's a gift. So this means we can already go and save up some consumer goods for a colony ship uh, that early on. We will try to get two um, two outposts and two colonies running as soon as we can, as soon as we possibly can. The way to go for this is, of course, energy credits. And um, there's also more to do than with the energy credits, and that is uh, here. Like, getting rid of the sprawling slums as soon as we can is also a very good idea. And maybe we'll do that first and then the other things later, because that get, gives us another pop. What can the pop do? It can go do a clerk job. That's not the best of jobs, as you can see here. What's the output of that? Four amenities. Yeah, I mean, it's not, no, it's two amenities, four trade. It's not that bad either. It would fix our amenities, so I think we, sh we, we probably should do that. <laughs> Starsick lover. Yeah, let's have a look at our leaders that we can recruit. Look at that. With meticulous leaders available. That's ah, it's so good. It's so good. And now we we are at the like. What we would want is start with discovery, right? 
to get map the stars, but you also want these meticulous leaders early on. So and they they take precedence and a spark of genius to boot. It's too good to be true. The discovery of alien life. The GOT Starseek lover has made a startling find. The planet is teeming with alien life. Yeah, here we go. We are. This amazing discovery has silenced those who believed we were alone in the universe. Although none of the alien creatures found in Escon 3 are sapient, it's likely only a matter of time before we encounter beings that are. And we get society research. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Construction completed. We've got that completed and we can already build the next mining station. It's so cheap! Mining stations for the win. It's wonderful, really. It's wonderful. Simple forms of life. Everybody likes it. There's, while far from intelligent, there's life out there. First contact protocols. We can choose how the world should see us and a big advantage at the start if you want some diplomacy on Grand Admiral. Always go for greeting the Xeno with open arms because otherwise you really won't have a chance also to get the influence. Because first contact in discovery speed is increased by 10%. So you have a chance to be the first to discover the other empire. And this means you get the you get the influence from that. And you also get 50% more influence for winning this. So it's it's just a, an influence generator and early um, diplomatic consequences. So unity. Once we have 100 unity, we'll look into the leader tab again and see if we can maybe do something there. <laughs> if it's only recruiting another genius, it will be good. So let's see. Um, We should definitely create that pop. As soon as we can to increase our output because we have very, very good people. Not the longest living leaders, but very good people. Construction completed. Hastily. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, hastily completed. <laughs> also building uh, the research station now. With no problems with minerals, thanks to the reduction from our from our good Chancellor Hapless, the space miner and explorer. Wonderful. We should also look into the situation log. We want aggressive agriculture, so two additional agricultural districts for the unity bonus. We'll we'll try to do this as late as we can. The latest. Um, now we're saving up for a bit of consumer goods or something. We'll see. Hello there. What should we take? It's so hard. This is really good. This is really good. How long are they living? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is probably the best choice. Malcontent through and through. A very young genius. Very young genius will build profit from that most because age really does matter here and uh, probably here is, is the best choice mm, and we also have as you can see here the whistle thistle class <laughs> can even go for a science ship this early on and we'll do that To give our people something to do. So how much we will need here? Mm. Mm. It's just so tempting to get the meticulous ones out there. But this takes precedence. Survey the systems. Construction completed. And we'll leave the anomalies alone for now because we want this to be open as quickly as we can and we'll invest into something also here as quickly as we can so we're already sending the construction ship over there's very good alloys and stuff here to be had and once we have 200 alloys we'll try to start 
There's a colony ship already. I don't want to buy alloys, it's just so expensive. Mm, very soon. Next month. A system has been surveyed. That has already been surveyed, so we could start construction right here. It'd also be good to get <sighs> Maybe in this case we'll build the Starbase first. Because we made it so quickly. We have the Starsic lever. Where should we send them? And they're def definitely a good choice, so we should we should send them out maybe here to the black hole. That will be interesting. And then here. So we have someone coming here, another Gothican. We have to think about what we want to build there at first. And yeah, we need, we definitely need alloys. So uh, we could go into another district, but we need minerals for that. We'll see if we get that together quickly. So alloys would really be, now let's see if we can build buy some minerals to reach that goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should really build one more and then build the industrial district here. Here we go. We'll get these alloys out quickly and the expansion going as quickly as we can. We can even wait a bit, but this alloy I, I want to get quickly. And then the colony ships um, with more alloys will come out very, very speedily. The Fist of, of God. Centuries ago, a group of radical priests and their devoted followers on Gothold broke away from the established religions to form their own church. These extremists called themselves the Fist of God and have been responsible for many atrocities and acts of terror over the years. Although they may have kept a low profile, we recently learned that many of the agents have infiltrated our military. They have been secretly been diverting resources to the construction of a small fleet of starships at a hidden facility on Gothold. Their treasury was revealed. The cultists blasted into orbit on their ships and fled to never-ending hope. There they are. There's our fleet. We need a leader for the fleet. <laughs> oh, God. Gale Speed is a good leader. Mm. Without aimless doxy, we won't have... Yeah, we will have a chance, but because of our station, but... Let's, let's see what we get. Mm. Uh, could we attack the hijacked fleet? Will, will we be helped? That's a good question, right? Let's see, we're passive. Construction completed. Phase two. Now, will, will our station help us? Our station should help us, theoretically. Station doesn't even help. <laughs> station doesn't care. What the heck? <laughs> but, I mean, we have weapons here, right? So, why don't they... Why don't they even care? What's going on there? I mean, we have a big advantage against them, but... This is just... <laughs> I'm not sure how this will go. I was attacking into that, thinking that we could... Yeah. <laughs> that we could get going. Okay, I, 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 hope we'll, I hope we'll win this. Let's see. It looks like we'll win this. It's also good to do this early on, so if we lose one ship, has been that's okay. But we might lose two. Cultist ship disabled. We lost only one corvette, we we're so lucky. Our valiant space forces have skillfully disabled the ship in the cultist armada. It's mostly intact and we're picking up faint life signs from inside its hull. 
Once we've eliminated all threats in the immediate vicinity, we should conduct a boarding operation to secure any survivors. They may be able to tell us more about the ultimate motives of the Fist of God. Prepare the breaching charges. Yeah, that's why we're, we didn't do the alloy trick here, because in pre-made empires, you always have the chance for this quest line to trigger, and then you're sitting there without any defense. So, yeah. Oh, that requires a science ship. Okay, we'll we'll go back then and heal up. We'll need a science ship, I think. Because, let's see. Yeah, it's already starting, so... <laughs> that meticulous one is moving out. Carefree is also good. Roma is also good. Hmm. But meticulous is, even for 10 years only, would be would be the best, so... We'll hire someone meticulous for that. Currently building that. Uh, we might need another science ship. It's really interesting choices. I, I like how they how they spiced up the start a lot. Now let's see. Yeah, we need a little bit more unity. And then we'll get the... Yeah, we also have debris there now. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, we can already build that. Let's build the science ship and get that debris going, right? That's a great idea. So we can get, we can already see what we get back from that. Void lurch of... <laughs> it's been repaired. <laughs> Good stuff. Void lurchers. Uh, next month we're gonna get a, a leader. I really like the new changes. Did I say, say that already? I think I did. Ah, <laughs> and they're gone. But we have someone carefree still. Carefree good. And Spark of Genius is also good, only for 16 years. Carefree isn't really that great, even though the bonus is a big bonus. But we're just gonna go for the Spark of Genius. And Sparks of Genius usually belong to labs unkind to a fault and then we'll get to it soon now we're waiting for map the stars a system, has been surveyed. system has been surveyed very nice um so oh look at that there's a mega structure in there i kind of i'm i'm i don't believe this uh, so we'll go along this path There's a mega structure here even. <laughs> it's fantastic. Debris is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Fist of God, of course. I've got the science ship. We have a rather experienced, unruly yet confused. Scavenge and research projects in system. Wonderful. That's why we have, still have hostile fleets present here. Good, good, good. So we're really getting into this, and very soon we'll have the the, the, the full alloys, and then we'll then we'll launch our colony ship towards that. Look at that! There's another alpine world here. That is so crazy. We'll go along the path. We we'll probably have a neighbor. We probably have a neighbor, just saying, with also Alpine preference. We'll see about that. Will be the worst of things. I mean, depends on the neighbor. We'll build the outpost here. Uh, wait, no, 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 we'll just move here first. Okay, so we'll move here. Because we don't need the colony ship right now. We only need it later. And I've deliberately uh, made it normal because there's a lot to think about here now from time to time. So let's buy some consumer goods first. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, we'll we'll need more, so we can we can just buy the 250, and then we'll start to send something here. Escont Prime. Ah, we can already see a lot. 
Right, there's a massive glacier here, impassable mountains, all wind cliffs, a fungal forest. Very interesting area. Let's send them over. Cool. So let's see what we can do. I mean, we can un unruly yet confuse. Could maybe go and care for the anomalies and so, and so on. Mm, innocent goddess is also good for that anyways habitable world survey um the question is should we go for that or should we go for the unity that's not much unity so we'll begin the habitable worlds survey event chain the xenobiologists have urged us to focus our planetary survey efforts on habitable and life-bearing worlds yeah we'll do that because we already see a lot of a lot of planets will be here and we also have the megastructure Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, 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 wait. Everything is happening at once. We have finished and scavenging and analyzing the debris in Unhopeful Lantern. We get 22 alloys, 40 engineering research, 100 physics research, and specialized combat computers. 10% progress. Cool. Very cool. Um, next thing will be this anomaly here. And we have found about the Town Star Assembly in Yerba 7 here. They must have been active in this region of space approximately 12 million years ago, judging by the age of the artifacts. From what they've been able to piece together, our scientists theorize that these aliens, who called themselves the Voltam Star Assembly, were warm-like annelids, roughly 3 to 4 meters in length that communicated with each other primarily through vibrations carried along their segmented bodies. I think that's kind of arthropods or something. Um, millipedes or so. <laughs> or so. <laughs> Very cool thing. Ah, Gorthold. Let's organize you. Soon have the industrial district going. Now let's see. Yeah, we what we want is more alloys, definitely. And what we don't need is much of the energy. So... The idea is to remove some technicians. And instead go... For more of our jobs here did we already do that i'm not sure yeah we have now we have someone unemployed <laughs> that's great it's just great let's make it so nice so of course they all want to go in, into specialist jobs like we also want right that will have very soon some consequences let's see if we can go for something special here no okay Remnants, intelligence life, ta taunts with pointed absence. Reads a popular news net post on Gothold. People in the Gothican Alliance are apparently finding some humor in the fact that the lower forms of alien life are now a matter of public record, but potential equals from the stars continue to elude us. The report on the traces of alien life that were recently found seemingly only add an ironic twist to the situation. Yeah, I mean, as a pre-space society, you don't want to be found by aliens. Usually that is a very bad idea for a couple of reasons. It only makes problems. It could also be very beneficial, but mm, out of the blue, you don't risk something. If you have a flip, flip coin chance of them being good or evil, it's <laughs> if they find you, they're going to be so powerful. So, so powerful. So you don't want to risk the flip chance. Let's see what we can do here. Um, we can certainly soon build the outpost here. Cool, cool, cool. And we're currently building the colony ship, though. So we can put the outpost in between of that. Right, we have now have 17 incoming lawyers and 8 incoming consumer goods. So that's a very cool thing to have. Is that now... Are we now researching that? Ah, now... Uh, we have researched that, and now we can go and use the military ship to board that. Good. We'll just look at the leaders, and we'll pick up who is who is good. I'm mindful, yeah, but not 49. So we'll wait now until we get uh, get to make uh, to map the stars. Our constructor doing now we should be able to build wonderful we'll build now 
just like that. What will we find out from the Fist of God? Research log. Boarding action! Though the survivors offered stiff resistance, our boarding party was able to secure several prisoners from the disabled cultic starship. From them, we have learned that this conspiracy goes far deeper than we initially suspected. The agents of the Fist of God include several flag officers and high-ranking officials within our government. Mass arrests are being made on Gorthold, and all asserts belonging to this cult have been seized. However, several of the starships they build in secret remain unaccounted for, and the upper elicalons of the cult's leadership have vanished. We've picked up faint iron trails leading to several outlying systems. We must pursue them. We must pursue them. Where can we see them? Aha. Uh -huh. Arich, Jardlafon, and Sol. Sol. That's gonna be interesting. Ha, huh, we don't know the names of them. Of these systems in advance. That might lead to very interesting and un interesting in hyphens situations. We'll see about that, eh? Construction is going forward. We have a lot of consumer goods and things are looking fine. Rugged perfectionist, yeah, <laughs> on the Starsic level. Gain some experience. Good, good, good. Always looking from time to time. Always pays off. And. The standard specialization seem to be gone for now. And this is all that we will uh, for now. Set up. Oh, look at that. There's also Continental World. So the next steps will be definitely be Devil's Moor and Karasta. So we can expand there. So it's for now uh, expansion and not grabbing anything from out there for the resources that we find there. Alien writing. Someone used a mining laser from orbit approximately 5,000 years ago to carve a large body of writing into the surface. Escon 4A, the massive script covers a large portion of the moon's upper hemisphere and appears to be a short story chronicling the difficult life of an alien mercenary. And that will help us with research later on. That's our science ship here. And yeah, unsure a bit. Where we should go, this would be worth looking at. We're going into one direction. There's another direction to be had if I'm not sh yeah, not I'm not totally sure, but we'll go I think along these lines with our ship. The next constructions will soon be ready and then we can quickly go for another colony ship. Not at any price, but yeah, look at this. That's that's good stations, solid stations here. Shrewd Lunkhead, our governor. <laughs> With a little bit more unity has improved. Let's see. How are the edicts currently? Yeah, it's cheap to go for damn the consequences, but we cannot afford it yet. It might be soon, though. It might be soon. Really waiting for that. And the unhopeful Lantern A station. Yeah, we're on the way. And the next step is uh, soon to be had. Let's see. We have more people here. We should open that job. So they can work there if needed. As another technician and then we'll need uh, something more something more for amenities most probably holo theaters will be a good choice we'll save up for that oh, i like that that that's a that's such an inspiring track do with him is there some carters leveled up good 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 I go yeah around these lines that's a that's a good idea 
the black holes. There's not many anomalies or planets usually in the black holes, so it's a good way to expand. What have we found in Fidjantris? And we're going to research here for now. So, um, when we get mapped the stars, it will have more info. Oh my goodness! We've made first contact with mysterious aliens in the Athuna system. For now, we've codenamed them Gamma Aliens until we can find out more about them. Ah, we've made first contact. News of alien ships humming through the ether has reached Gorthold. In many ways, ending the first chapter in the Book of the Gorthican Alliance bid for Stellar Empire. <gasps> Look at that. That seems menacing. We're attempting to evade them. Oh my goodness me. Ephemeral Grouch. Do your best. They seem to be hostile, out of the box. You have allowed a science oh, ship to be destroyed. No! Innocent Gartus, rest in peace. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's kind of dangerous. I'm convinced that is kind of dangerous. Uh, okay, so after that, you will build that research station here and we'll soon be able to build another colony ship for this place that's most probably not normal aliens it looks like a marauder uh, a marauder station so then after that yeah we can already plan for that after that you'll go to devil's moor and build this our colonists have reached their destination. The first Gothican colony on Escont Prime. The ship has been permanently converted into the administrative headquarters. With hundreds of small tents and prefab shelters, we launched the first Gothican city. A foreign world. And we have sonified silence. Aha. Uh -huh. Science. The inconsistent timekeeper crew has succeeded in isolating a signal embedded within the unusual pattern of interference in the Fedjantris system. The signal's a song, a complex sonification of an advanced mathematical equation, to be precise, and one that science officer unruly yet confused cannot seem to get out of their head. Who or what may have, been co may have composed this song remains unknown. Though its complexity infers an incredible level of technological sophistication regarding subspace harmonics, the signal's geodesics suggest a point of origin from outside of our galaxy. Very interesting stuff from unruling yet confused. Um, and now? Send the Gothicans to the, to the mountains of Hadricus, where our future lies. And then to Carasta. There's another Alpine world there. Ooh, so good. So good. And very soon, in two months, in two months, mark my words, so to say. Yeah, they don't look to be friendly. But hey, we can also be not friendly. What? Signs of precursor activity in Yerba? I think we should leave that be for now. Now we want to go to map the stars. There's no point in waiting for more people. And then we want some more science ships going. Here we go. Let's pick up Discovery. The surest way to destroy your enemies is to make them your friends. So, uh, wait, that's Discovery. Not Discovery, that's Diplomacy. Yeah, we want map the stars. Yeah, go for Diplomacy right away <laughs> with, with no one in sight. We might go Diplomacy later though. It's a really good tradition if you want to go for a federation. Ah, it's the only then. <laughs> Our curiosity about the universe is what got us this far, and there's still so much left to discover. Anomaly research speed increased by 20% and map the stars is unlocked. That's gonna be so good. The next would be to boldly go so we have a ship at disengaged chance. That would have helped us earlier. <laughs> that would have, would have helped us. Um... Can we already activate map the stars? No, next month. Next month we'll be able to activate that. That's a good idea. And a super good idea. A system has been surveyed. Yerba. Okay, we'll go here and then I don't know. 
Looks like there could be more there. So, so, boom. let's map the stars together. Damn the consequences. We'll go for that later. I'm waiting for that. How's the construction going? Construction is going nicely. Now we can already look to new scientists. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't have the best scientists here, but at least they're cheap. At least they're cheap. We're not missing something there. We'll look into their, that from time to time and see if we can, if we can grab someone, to, so to say, and then we'll use them to explore or for something else. We'll see. What have we found out? Signs of barbarism. These aliens seem to have a language, but our linguists are still working on deciphering it so we can make sense of the display of pure barbarism. Disturbing. We must be watchful. So what this will help us with anyway is getting a bunch of influence. It will also block expansion from this side, so we can rely on that no one comes there, but they might come one day. I found an abandoned gateway in Demon's Moor. Oh my goodness. Oh. It is connected to the L cluster. Even more intriguing, the gateway was built entirely by macroscopic nanites of an unknown design. Although it emits a faint power signature, it has been deliberately locked into some kind of maintenance loop that prevents its activation. The, situation has been the L cluster. See that here? We need L gate insights to unlock that, and then we have access to a special L cluster. That has jump gates all over the place. Constructor going forward, Gothic and Alliance going forward. Let's see. An archaeologist, not bad. But also not super great. Aha, uh -huh. Demon's War. Been expanding on that. We should build something there. Right? We should have something there. But what next? What would be good? We can start with the mutagenic spa, but we don't want that on an industrial planet. Hmm. We could start with alloy foundries. Turn minerals into alloys. Yeah. Could use even more alloys or we could start with administrative offices to get just a little bit more unity going i think that's the better choice so we'll go for more administration early on that's surely not bad counter in tiamat the omega aliens let me see what is that that's a a space station yeah we want to learn about them half-hearted bellevue You'll do what you can. There's also a planet here, another alpine world. Oh, that's so nice. So if we expand along these lines, we will have Tiamat and another alpine world. That's fantastic if we manage to do that. So we'll definitely, along these lines, try to expand as much as we can. And always look for leaders. It's definitely looking good for us. Even though that encounter was pretty terrifying. Research complete. What? Well, research speed. 5% more. Ah, oh, nice. So what would be the next? Um, so we don't want weaponry first. We go for global energy management then. It's the best choice, even though it's not the best one. The best one to be had. But it's a solid choice. Even at this point in the game. We can then go for another specialized energy planet or something like that. Very early on. Construction completed. I've completed that. Move over here. And claim Karasta. And settle there. Red after all, leveled up. Nice. So theoretically we could uh, already start by constructing another colony ship here. And we'll definitely do that as soon as we have the alloys. 
We'll do that even before we construct the outpost here, I think. An anomaly has been found. Ah, another anomaly here. Signs of a precursor activity. Wow, uh, better that will take so long. We'll leave that be for now, from the rugged perfectionist. Now, we can go boldly. <laughs> Survey speed increased. Science ship disengaged chance increased. That's uh, the other step to successful exploration early on, is to take that, because you don't lose so many ships and survey speed increase is really significant with 35%. So definitely a very good option because why? Because we were granted a lump sum of unity here. And also we get 5% more unity now. So it's just good. Let's see what we can get on now. Edict's fun. Yeah, that's tempting. Uh, we'll go eco simulation for now. It's not the best, but more food from farmers means we don't have to build farms in the near future, so it's fine. We will build them, of course, because we have the quest for it. But still, we don't need we don't need to. Something's happened. The Thembalon Braves encountered. There's no central government to speak of. There, divided into several different factions that vie endlessly with another for resources and respect. Yeah, more Dwarmax. What do you want, foolish Dwarmax? The Thimble and Braves say. What happened to make your face look like that? Reactor accident? Vacuum exposure? <laughs> look at you. We are the Thimbalons. We hunt Dwarmax. If you come to Thimbalon turf, you make Dwarmax screw. Not good for you. Yes, yeah. Perhaps you know other Dwarmax. Perhaps you want them to be Dwarmax too. This can be arranged. Thimbalons not above fighting for Dwarmax. And other Dwarmax, if Paris is right. Uh, yeah, let's end the transmission. With these barbarians, they're here and they're dangerous, armed and dangerous. I mean, I mean, yeah, okay, they are armed. If you can see, they have arms. What do you really see? Is that infernal shrieking? Yeah, what shrieking? Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Something's happened in one of the first... Yeah, oh, oh yeah, structured signals. We've picked up some readings of unknown nature. Signals seem to follow some kind of repeating syntax. It could indicate sapient origin. We must know more. Research complete. Good, good, good. Nanomechanics research. Very, very good. And here we can go further by increasing mining station output. Something that will be good. And we're in a nebula and we can go for a nebula refinery here. That will also be a cool thing to go for. We're waiting a little bit for more alloys to build yet another colony ship. Because the way uh, the time it will take here. Ah, oh, we've we found Tiamat 3A. May once have supported life in the distant past. There are significant deposits of frozen water. And this moon could be terraformable in Tiamat, which is really significant as there's also an alpine world there. So this system is definitely the system to go for. Exclamation mark go for. So one final check. Do we have a good leader to research out there? No. Then we'll go and uh, dedicate ourselves to the colony ship. And then later on build that here. Construction ship will have to wait a bit, but that's fine. In Gothold, we'll soon have some administrative offices that will use the consumer goods that we have there. Mm -hmm. And we can now go like into this direction and into this direction. Discovered a new archaeological site. Nice! Where is it? Is it it's, it's up here in Dram. Cool, cool. There's a very low chance, like 1.5% 1, 1, 1 or something, to get that. So it's it's really lucky to have that. Maniacally <laughs> checking for the leaders. And very soon, how much do we need for that? Mm, 29, so in two months we'll be able to do it. Um, so how do we proceed with Unity? We want to go for expansion. Because these guys profit from expansion because of their population mechanics and uh, so 
Definitely, that will be the next step. Uh, let's see, we don't have to probably hurry into this direction. But still, a black hole is always interesting to go for. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Yeah, we'll go into this direction then. Let's have a look at the leaders. Uh, still the same leaders here. Malcontent has leveled up. Good stuff. And we can build the outpost now. And very soon, another colony. It's good to have many planets with them because of their population uh, drive for early on. And now, as I said, we'll go for expansion. First for colony development speed that we'll profit from even now. And then for Reach for the Stars to save up a little bit more influence even. They're preparing for the next one already. It's going for the administrative offices. Yeah, there's a little bit low amenities here. We'll have to fix that later. It's still tolerable. <laughs> System has been serving. Varus Maelstrom. Nice. Always looking into new leaders. Yeah, it's not important right now. Complete. We'll go for that later. Now we that we've claimed that it's it's really good. Carasta. Mm. Oh no! Encounter in Howard. The Moo aliens. Ooh. They're not that dangerous. But I mean they are. There's an archaeological site too. Fly out of that. Another precursor anomaly. Oh, leave that be for now. Come for that later. That's really the, the, the path of expansion that is like it seems like it's our destiny there, right? Communications established with a Xuraco. Nice. A business conglomerate operating out of the Tiamat system, specializing in trade, the very building blocks of civilization, as we like to say here at Xuraco. Please do not hesitate to contact us if you're interested in making a good deal. Well met, Xuracorp. Well met. It will be interesting. We could... Uh, we would like a... Oh, we can buy exotic gases there. We could hire a consultant, a governor, to run one of our sectors. Nice! Now, it's definitely interesting to have them also in there. That's definitely the way. It's the way. It's just the way. So... If we don't get a good leader, we'll concentrate on unity. We might get a good one, but currently there's no one really inside. I think they're just... Something changed there. Yeah, expertise computing is good. Okay, where are you here? Mm, so this is cut off. Then we'll go into this direction. And then... Oh, we don't even have to do this. We can grab this whole amount of space. Yeah, we, if we if we expand along these lines. So this means we'll send them rather into into that direction as well. Well, that's really a curious position we're in. This means from the start, except from that, we're kind of blocked. That's something really novel. So if we find someone meticulous, we'll send them in here for backtracking. And this one we'll, um, we'll send into that direction here as well. Because there's another direction here, that's the direction here, and there's the direction here where this continues. So we'll send them along these lines. Next colony ship is on the way. Go to Carusta Prime. Really, in a wonderful spot. One more place to live out your pitiful lives. <laughs> One more place to live out your pitiful lives is what we've found it. Pitiful, but together. Um.
one of the features. We have a massive glacier, the impassable mountains. Yeah, that's nice. Hmm. Yeah, it's a great planet. What what are we gonna do with that? It's probably good for an industrial district or for food. But this is it's it screams like industrial, right? It's wonderful. Uh, what could the other ones be? Let's see here. That's more of a base resources planet. I still like it. And then we have this one, which is bleak. So no food from here, but it could be good for mining. Yeah, stay under the ground if it's too bleak. Good way to go. Unity will be done in 15 months and then we'll get... Uh, we get even more influence if we uh, go for reach for the stars and that's definitely what we're gonna do that's the plan reach for the stars then colonization fever to get more pops to the planets and a new life pop growth speed increased by 10 percent and we can also go for more planets then as we can already adapt our people send them there and then manipulate them it's wonderful we'll have so much growth there with really specialized variations of ourselves. I'm looking forward to that. And you, we have a very interesting start uh, with the Braves here being rather isolated, but still extremely interesting. Some alien vessels that are trying to block us and a really, really tempting Xuracorp station plus one and potentially two planets. So we'll go into that in the next episode together. Have a great time until then. Uh, have some uh, <laughs> some toxic fun. Make sure to leave some toxic comments below the video. <laughs> uh, we also have a Discord that you could join and uh, if you want to be less toxic. <laughs> so have a great time until, the, until then and happy gaming. This is Immanuel Kahn signing out. See you soon and happy gaming. May we be, I don't know, may we transform into ourselves into something better and a little bit toxic. See you soon. Happy game.